Hello, this is Mike Swanson. I run the website wallstreetwinner.com. And it's been a wild, uh, interesting year in the market. I mean, people were worried at the beginning of the year that the Fed won't lower interest rates fast enough. The January meeting came. They didn't lower rates. The market popped anyway uh, after initially selling off on that Fed meeting news. But the next day up, Friday up even more. And uh, I got a special guest with me today to see what he thinks is going on in these markets and what are the best ways to trade them or what's he doing in them. And that's David Skarika, who runs the website addictedtoprofits.com and has the YouTube channel Stock Chart of the Day. How you doing today, Dave? Um, I'm good. Oh, yeah. Just, just so it's, it is addictedtoprofits.net, just so you know. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, it, it, pretty soon everything's going to be on stockchartoftheday.com. I'm going to move everything over there probably in the first quarter sometime. And um, yeah, the YouTube's really easy to remember. It's Scott. So the, all the short form for stock chart of the, and then day. So Scott day is you know, youtube.com slash Scott day. And you'll see, I've, I've been doing videos now for that since June. I probably have over a hundred videos on there. I just did one on gold and precious metals. If people are interested and uh, talking about how I think maybe in the spring is the time they'll really move. Um, I think even despite with the strong employment report today, the day we're talking, um, here, I think it's February 2nd. I still think the Fed is going to start cutting rates in May. And I think that's going to be good probably for the, even the stock market. It's not cheap, but it's probably going to continue the stock market rally and be really, really good for gold and precious metal stocks. Actually, I did an older video, which basically um, showed that if you go look at rate cut cycles, um, 2019 and then 2020 after COVID crash, 29, 2009 when they started QE, your early 2000s. The best performing sector is period. More than tech stocks, more than growth stocks, more than utilities. It's gold and precious metal stocks when they begin that that loosening cycle. You know. Well, one thing I was going to tell you, um, the the Wall Street Journal had two interesting articles Wednesday morning before the Fed decision. That when you take them together, I mean they're like leaks from the Fed talking to them, right? And when you take the two articles together, they set the stage for a May rate rate cut. Uh, what the articles were saying, one of them was saying that, oh, these different Federal Reserve banks, they got these statistical models that show that interest rates are too high now. Now they're too high. And then the other article said that the Fed doesn't want to start cutting in the fall because it's too close yeah. to the election. And they don't want to start cutting in January and real early because the economic data isn't soft enough or the inflation. It needs more time with the inflation coming down uh, before yeah. it can, or else it'll look political. So they got to wait to May. So they're going to lower interest rates in May, I think, just as you're saying. And you think that'll be uh, pretty good for gold, uh, for gold and mining stocks. Uh I think one of the reasons they're going to raise, or sorry, cut rates is because, you know, behind this, like the, all the stock market indices doing well and these big tech stocks doing well, is that the regional banks are having big problems again. A couple of regional banks blew up on earnings, and the issue the regional banks are having, I'm going to do it in a nutshell. They borrowed all this money when money was cheap, and then they loaned out all the money, you know, and because um, everyone wanted to buy a house or whatever when interest rates were, you know. 1% and mortgages were three, 4%. But the problem with them is now, and you know, and they also, you know, they buy bonds and do their own investments. This stuff is all way down in value because interest rates have gone up so much. So, but people want more money in their deposits. People are like, well, the federal reserve is paying out, you know, um, the federal reserve is paying, or sorry, federal, the, the, you know, whatever they, yeah, the federal, so the federal government's paying out 5% on a short-term bond. You got to give me five, six percent of my savings account, and they can't do that because they're not because they have all these other you know things they invested in years ago that are giving them two, three percent. And then the issue is, uh, people then take their money out of the bank because they're not getting that five or six percent, and they'll put it somewhere where they can get it, and then they can't use those deposits to lend money out and now get these higher interest rates. So these regional banks are seeing these outflows and deposits. They can't take advantage of the higher rates. So one way that the Fed can help these regional banks out is by kind of loosening loosening monetary policy. So then people will be like, oh, I don't, you know, now that rates are say three or 4%, I 
when they get down there instead of five or six, you know, they, they don't they won't request as much and they'll be more likely to keep their money in that bank. So I think that's that's you know, they don't talk about that kind of stuff on the surface. But I think that like you're going to see that happen. And the Fed knows that. I think they're going to be like, we don't want some kind of banking crisis, even though, let's face it, the regional banks are nowhere near the size of the banks that failed in 2008. But still, they don't want, you know, like I guess the the um, the equivalent would be like the SNL crisis of the early 90s. They don't want something like that to happen again. Right. So I think part of the reason they're going to be, you know, um, yeah, you're showing one of the banks there. There's There's one that's based up in New York that it was the one they were bailing out all the other regional banks back last March when this happened. And then I guess, you know, by bailing them out, they took on a lot of those bad assets and now they're screwed. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. That's the one I got um, a chart of. It's New York. Yeah. New yeah. New yeah. I, I was laughing when I read that you know, guys was like, yeah, no, they've taken on all those. Um, and I think the, again, the, end, cause they're not, cause they can't pay out interest. Like, other things can, other um, asset classes can now. Um, and then, which means they, they, they're they seeing assets lead, which means they can't loan money and take advantage of the higher rates. It's just killing them. And I think the Fed is tossed to um, you know, kind of reverse course for that. And then, of course, the government uh, debt, the interest that they pay on the debt got, went over a trillion dollars for the first time ever. So if these rates stayed at 5% for the next 10 years, I think I read that that would go to t- $3 trillion, <laughs> you know? And so the government would almost, you know, that would eat into so much of the budget. They couldn't pay out Social Security and defense budget and all this kind of thing. So I think they also know those kind of things. And they, and like you said, like, you know, with them, with inflation kind of going back down to roughly 3%, they don't want inflation, you know, uh, sorry, they don't, they, they're kind of like, well, rates are 5%. So let's cut rates uh, down uh, to 3%. And by the way, even with these strong jobs numbers, strong economic numbers, all that's happened is the first rate cut just been gone from March to May. And now we're pricing in 125 basis points of cuts this year instead of 150. But again, if you can look at the histor- history is that in that first 12 to 18 months of the rate cut cycle, uh, um, gold and gold stocks tend to perform the best. You know, if you look at like, you know, in 2001, when the whole market still went down for another, you know, 20 months, into the fall of 2002, gold and gold stocks did great until the fall of 2002, right? So, um, uh, and then in other cycles, even when markets rallied, uh, 2009, uh, 2020, the gold and gold stocks all did well. And again, if you look at the resistance level of this 2100 in gold, look at the past resistance levels, 20, uh, sorry, um, 1400, back from 2016 to 2019, 1000 in 2008, 2009, about 425 in 2003 gold went 50 to 150 percent higher of the previous uh high which would we you know we're definitely put gold at 3,000 to 4,000 on this next move and you're speaking when you say the next move a move that would be happening during the, yeah during the the rate cut cycle basically cycle. yeah which we're basically it, uh, only four months away from it. One analogy I used too was in 2003, even though we're kind of we're nearing the end of the rate cut cycle, there still had a couple more that, that happened. Um, gold, it's more the price action similar. Gold spiked up in January on the Iraq war invasion, you know, because it was anticipating, okay, now there's going to be big deficits. They're going to have to spend all this money for the war. And then it came back down and then it really started to move higher in about April of 2003. So I think we've seen a similar thing that gold spiked higher and nothing's going to be exactly the same uh, in late November, early December of last year. It's kind of come back down. You know, it's kind of basing around the low 2000s. And I think sometime, I don't know if it's going to be March, April, May, but sometime in that time frame, we're going to see gold really begin to move higher and break above those highs. You know? Yeah, and I, I put on so people can see it go. I got a chart of gold from 2002 to 2007. Yeah, yeah you can see that kind of that spike in early 2003 through. and then see how it kind of pulled back and then it just moved higher the rest of the year. That's kind of what I'm looking at here that we've had, we had the spike back in November. We're kind of in the consolidation, you know, kind of where we were. 
say in March, April, and I don't know when of 2003, I don't know when that next move higher will start, but it, it'll probably, you know, look, look at gold is not down that much considering how strong the employment report was, right? It's only down, like the GLD is only down one 175 today, not even a percent, you know? Yeah, that's what I thought last year. You know, the, 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 the Fed was hiking throughout the entire year and gold finished the year higher than it began. <laughs> you know, it was, it closed about around 2050 and it started the year around, uh, 1850. That was last year. Yeah. And yeah. Hike, when, hike, when rates were going up. So what's going to happen when rates go down? Yeah, ex exactly. Right. Well, and, and what happened in 2003 was gold had been going higher despite the fact there was this huge bear market in stocks. Yeah. So awesome. when they did the reinflation trade, and the market moved and there was all this liquidity, it was like, boom, I'm, I remember the gold, the first great move I had, you know, I was only about 25 years old at that time, was that 2003 market. And actually, I remember did it, I, did a, I did a thing in my uh, newsletter and I called it the year of the junior, right? And, and And what I meant by that was like, this was the year these junior stocks were really going to take off. Because in 2001, 2002, gold and gold stocks have done well, but the juniors have just kind of done okay. And uh, but, so if we get this liquidity trade when the market continues to do well, they're cutting interest rates, I think the gold equities will start to really move too. Because the one thing about them is, okay, look, at because of all this inflation, you think, oh, gold, inflation is great for gold. But the problem is these gold companies have costs. The 2000 we saw in gold at 2000, it's like 2,500 now in terms of what they need to have the same amount of profitability. Their costs in those four years are up 30, 40, 50%, you know? So you actually go, you could even argue maybe gold needs 3,000 for them to make the same amount of money because, um, you know, food, you know, you got to feed your miners, uh, energy costs, um, the costs of like, you know, if you're building the mine, steel, all this kind of stuff is is way higher than it was at the bottom of uh, the commodities market in 2020 and that's hurt the miners you know so i want to i know you got to go soon i want to show you something before you know uh while i got you here and this is a chart dave it's real interesting of the money supply and yeah what's interesting to me about it is you know we had that bear market in 2022 and it was tough and the money supply was shrinking during that bear market. And it continued to go down into uh, last year in October. And ever since October, it's been going up. And it's been helping, I believe, the stock market go up. And the money yeah, supply yeah. is now higher now than it was last year in the summer. So it's going to keep going up. They're pumping money. They are pumping money into the economy. And I think that's something everyone involved in all the markets has to think about, and it should help gold. No, I, I 100% agree with you. Like, I just think, look, at, one thing about these rate cut cycles, too, I've seen a bunch of people talk about, like, oh, when they cut rates, everything is going to collapse, because that happened in 2008, 7, 8. And, 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 but look, at, in 2001, the dot-com bubble was bursting. In 2007, we had all these banks blowing up. Okay, we got the regional banks have problems now, but you're not seeing this in the major financial sector. You know, housing prices in 2007, 2008 had been going down for years. We're not seeing that as well. Like housing prices came off their highs a bit, but it was a very elevated high. And these lower rates will probably help housing prices in the short term. So I, I see it as a normal Fed rate, rate uh, cut cycle. 2019, um, you know, um, uh, 2020 after COVID, that's the right thing too. When they cut rates to zero after COVID, everything went crazy. You know, um, uh, 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 like um, the mid nineties, ninety five. That's what I kind of see happening now. Obviously, you have stop losses on your stocks. I I have a you know a small a small percentage in some bear funds as my hedge. You know, like you know two three. I, right now, I'm only like five percent of my portfolio in that because I because I am quite bullish. And you know, you have to always be aware something bad can happen. But I just see this as a normal, and we're in an election year, and then. Yeah. I talked about this in another podcast and I've talked about it with you. I think this is the most similar cycle I've seen going back. It, this is like 1966 to 1968. In 66, there was a very similar bear market to 2022, you know? And um, the market went down for about 10 months, went down 20, 
Um, and then it rebounded in 67. They cut rates, uh, you know, rallied during the election year of 68, peaked, I think, in the fourth quarter of 68. And then there was a bear market into 1970. That's kind of what I see here. And, and, and uh, you know, inflation really began again to move higher. Everyone talks about the 73, 74 bear market, but the 68 to 60, 70 bear market was pretty bad too. It was 36%, you know? So, hey, uh, I got to go now. I think I told you I got to take off here. At, uh, I can hear my friend out here. Um, so. Okay. Well, great catching up with okay. you. We'll definitely uh, do this yeah. again soon. Thanks. Okay, man. Take care.